An expectant crowd in their seats awaiting the introductions. Let's hear the roar which will greet Jimmy White's arrival in the arena. Our MC, Rob Nothman. Ladies and gentlemen, these two players have a staggering 33 Masters appearances between them. First, the 1984 champion, Jimmy White. Ladies and gentlemen, he's won the Masters Trophy on six occasions, Stephen Hendry. First to six reaches the semi-finals, your referee is Alan Chamberlain. A typically enthusiastic and highly partisan Wembley crowd. Disappointing always to get any player booed, but uh, they so badly want to see Jimmy winning this one. But Stephen Henry's been there before. He knows what it's all about. And this could be a Masters classic. Best of 11. Let's enjoy it with Dennis Taylor and Clive Everton. Thank you, Doogie. Good afternoon, everyone. Four times Jimmy Wright has played Stephen Henry through at Wembley. Thank He's you never beaten him. The first frame. Jimmy Could White. This be the day. <laughs> if that's how White's supporters applaud a break-off shot, what will they be like later? chance of the pot then goes to Jimmy White not that easy from tight under the cushion generous round of applause but that was a, a very good safety shot there from Jimmy I'm sure Stephen Henry will be able to cope the crowd here at the Wembley Conference Centre. He's used to it. It is some arena.
One. Not absolutely sure whether Hendry knew that that was going to happen. Stephen Henry, one. Yes, may have been able to pick out that plant. There's one on here. He might just be able to pass that red that's close to the black to get to the potting angle of one of the two that are just to the left of black. One. But not easy here. The black tied up, the blues hampered with the red next to it. I think the pink might be available, so got quite a bit to do here. Four. Yes, I think the pink may be available into both corner pockets, so he's okay at the moment. I suppose the reason he didn't play for pink there, it looks as if the pink spot's occupied, so if he potted that, it would be tied up in amongst the reds. So quite a bit of sorting out to do here if he's to compile a sizable amount of points. right enough, but uh, what was his colour going to be? Yes, I think the fact that he didn't get close to the pot was the reason when he's managed to fluke the snooker, he didn't play for the snooker, but to leave himself a pot on the blue. Foul and a miss, Stephen Hendry, four. Uh, he got very close to this red, but the miss had to be called because it was a much easier escape. attacking player that Jimmy produces. He's a very good tactical player also. And that's a mistake.
certainly is some atmosphere here this afternoon, and I suppose Jimmy supporters, they've got to be a little bit careful. It's great to have all this atmosphere and noise, as long as it's at the right time, but sometimes it can affect Jimmy if, if, if they get a little bit excited. At, well, not the right time as far as he's concerned. One. Yes, he also said that uh, there can be a downside of having the crowd on his side if he's not playing that well. But this year he is. The burden of expectation of one's supporters can be difficult to carry. White has given those supporters many disappointments over the years. Jimmy White, one. Didn't land as he wanted on that black. And uh, in trying to hold the cue ball, Made it too thick to pot it. <coughs> Lucky not to leave red to left corner. Jimmy might just be able to get past the green and the blue to that red you mentioned, Clive. Very awkwardly placed with the cue ball, but, well, it's quite tight. Might just be able to see enough of it at potting angle. No, no attempt at the pot. That was a good safety shot. Very fortuitous kiss on the brown there. It's left him with a very difficult pot on the yellow. <laughs> the reason he took the yellow on, he couldn't just roll up behind it because he wasn't guaranteed to get a snooker. Reds either side of the table there. One. <coughs> it's amazing how low Jimmy addresses the cue ball with the tip. He doesn't Seven. always strike it where he's aiming. He just comes up. Look at that, right down on the cloth. Just as he delivers the cue, it just comes up a fraction. Fifteen.
Jimmy White, 50. One you'd have expected Jimmy to get, but it shouldn't cost them that many because the Reds are very awkwardly placed here. One. Well, can he force over to the two reds and black? There must just be enough room for this one. But can Sweet. he develop the black and red when potting it? It's never going to be easy. Four. Difficult shot at that angle. Thin cut along the cushion. Knew that he would be covering the pocket with the black. If it didn't drop in. think there's enough room to squeeze past the black there. You'd have to be... Uh, that didn't look to be on. This opening frame then, a thing of bits and pieces. Seven. Still got quite a bit to do. Fourteen. Stephen Henry, 14. A little bit of a, an awkward frame with the balls going funny early on. But it's a very important one. It's nice to settle down and take the opening frame. seems to be slightly in the way. I don't know whether he can pop the green and just avoid the pink and move that red.
Jimmy White, four. It was a tough red he took on, but he felt it was worth the risk because the other one was reasonably safe, and he thought he might have wobbled this one in the jaws and put it safe, but it stayed there. One. Looking at the scoreboard, he's only 13 in front, so not really enough in front to push a colour safe at this stage. Green, green ball. Well, this is a very attacking shot indeed. He's taking the green on. Been lucky. Stephen Henry, one. He's been very lucky. He would have left white on the red if the green hadn't moved it. Instead, white is snookered. This is the type of shot that Stephen Hendry practices hour after hour. Long, straight, red. One. I don't know whether you noticed there, but the pace he played it at, he didn't hit it well. It was gently played with screw. position for the blue but he normally pops those nonetheless Yeah, he's got to get the white somewhere down towards the circle to leave an angle to pop the brown and give him a, himself a chance to get to the blue. So just the bottom edge of the circle would be ideal. A five. We've done with just a little bit more pace. That would have left brown straighter I don't think uh, he can risk cutting it along the rail Safety this cue ball almost on the board cushion, down almost on the top cushion. Danger of a double kiss. <laughs> Played it just right to get it just past the middle pocket.
foul and a miss. Jimmy White, four. Yes, he's got to be a bit careful. He doesn't want to go the other side of the brown. Jimmy being left-handed will leave the pot on, so he wants to just nestle into the back end of the brown here. And that's a lot further away. Foul and a miss. Jimmy White, four. One point the difference now. It's been a low-scoring opening frame, but it's uh, turning into quite an exciting one. Foul and a miss. And Jimmy White, four. Three consecutive miscalculations from Hendry. Who wants to hit this brown in such a way that he's going across it? able to get this brown twice across the table and in behind the black, white back towards the blue. <laughs> Blue's a nice target now. Jimmy might try and just get the white in behind it. Close to the pocket. <laughs> Bit unfortunate to go in off from that position, but there's always the possibility. the end of this frame Stephen Hendry looked a strong favorite with two or three reds on but this blue goes in and be framed to Jimmy glimmer of a chance when he could have ended the frame with that pink. There's a chance to get up behind the black off a couple of cushions here. Oh, too thin a contact. break in this opening frame. 15 on either side. Very scrappy, but very important. I don't think we'll have many frames lasting this long. It's just coming up to the half hour. It's 
it's very exciting. Directed by Hendry. Oh. And Hendry may be able to keep the pink out here, but won't be able to do much with it. could do was keep the pink out and hope for the best. Missed the occasional one, and he's missed a couple in that frame, which will cause him some concern. He'd only be human if it didn't upset him when he misses an easy ball. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. The second frame, Stephen Henry to right. Well, Jimmy took a, a long break there after taking the opening frame. Let's see what happens in frame two. Back to Dennis and Clive. the umpteenth time this week the end red comes down from the break off shot One. yes Clive and for the umpteenth time the two reds have gone close to the black there I don't think the black's available. Four. If you could get on the red that's to the left of the black, that'll be a few shots from now, but if he could get on that, he could bring the black into play. Fine. If he can get the white somewhere near the little circle there, he could get an angle to pot that red and cannon the other red. He'd still be okay because he's in the path of it. Ten. So if this works out, we could open the black up. Too much about the cannon.
to take a contact. And well, you can see what's happened. Jimmy having a look back at the table. He's opened the reds up. Blacks in the open. One. It's probably the best chance in the opening two frames. Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. Twenty-two. Three. Thirty. Never changes his way of playing. There was a couple of reds loose there, but he took the first opportunity to open the reds up. Thirty-eight. Nice. It sounded a bit of a heavy contact that. I think he's still okay. He's just got the other side of the blue. Let's just see if we can detect a little. Yeah, you could see red and the white jumping a little bit. Forty-four. Fifty-three. This is the sort of form that Stephen Hendry produced young, against young Sean Murphy, taking five frames in 60. a row after being four-one behind. Sixty-one. Sixty-eight. Sixty-nine. So White knows that he's 
Lost the second frame. And uh, it's been a hallmark of Hendry throughout his Seventy-five. career. 75. That he's won a very large proportion of his frames with uh, one single break. 76. Has never at any stage of his career won a high proportion of the scrappy frames. But the deadliest exploiter 83. of a break making opportunity that the game has ever seen. Ninety-seven. This is a little bit awkward now. He's going to have to manufacture a shot here to get on the green. He's dead straight 99. on it, so couldn't leave himself an easy pot. Ninety-nine in the frame to Stephen Henry. But in terms of winning a frame, 99 just uh, as effective as a century. It brings uh, Hendry level at one all. And uh, the key shot in that break was uh, the way that Hendry was, as ever, looking for an opportunity to open the Reds. Yes, you could see he could play for one or two reds, but he took the chance and got lots of screw on the ball. It's sort of a double screw. It hits the reds and then the white comes back again and he spread the reds perfectly. But he's always like that. Even early on in the frame, he looked at the chance of opening the pack up, as you mentioned, Clive and Commentary, to kill the frame off in one visit. <coughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, the third frame, Jimmy White to break. Thank you, thank you. Very awkward for Jimmy to get back down the table here. The two reds to the right preventing that. That's the reason he's coming off the side cushion. I think this is where Jimmy's going to have to compete with Stephen Hendry in the safety side of the game. They're both very attacking players, but in that previous frame, it was just a, a careless safety shot. And Jimmy caught the red too thick that left Stephen in. So.
It's his favorite type of shot, but he didn't cue that one very well. The red, no problem with the red to the middle. It's what he's going to do with the white. One. It was never going to be easy. I think he attempted to cannon the red just to the left of the black hoping to leave the black in a possible position, but uh, slid just past it. What's concerning him now is uh, the possibility of leaving a long red for Hendry no. by the right or left corner. Six. It's a Jimmy White special there. That was a very good pot. I don't believe that he would have taken it on, though, but for the difficulty of leaving both the long reds safe. Seven. choice of reds to play for but he's got to avoid the brown and yellow well might not even be able to do that try to go the other side and 12 wrong with Jimmy White's queuing. That was a, an extremely good pot because he was hampered slightly with the green there. <coughs> I didn't quite get into that, but He's still on the red, but a lot closer to the red that he played for. And it must be one that is available just in the middle of the bunch of reds there. Just a gap for it. Is Always has been a very good rest player. Learned to use it very well when he was young and uh, lacking in height. Twenty-four. Catch it as fools intended.
life, 24. Here's an interesting statistic. Jimmy White's average shot time, four seconds longer than Stephen Hendry. <laughs> and I suppose it's the type of player that, uh, when he beat Stephen Hendry in the World Championship, so three or four years ago, Clive, he, he was measured and, and, and paced himself around the table similar to this. One. Yes, that was a good red. But to take up your point, Dennis, as he's got older, he's found that he doesn't have quite the instant sighting of a shot that uh, he had when he was younger just takes uh, the odd second or two more <coughs> and maybe he's slower than Stephen Hendry in this match because he hasn't yet got into a break Hendry's 99 brought his average shot time down What Jimmy's looking at, he's looking to see if the pink will pot because he's got a red into the left middle pocket. But if it doesn't, he can quite easily play for the blue. Not a lot of room, there's just half the pocket there. He's having another look. He's just aiming as if he's queuing up to the red because he could leave the white where the red is. Six. As long as he doesn't snooker himself on that red that's near the pocket. He can then clear that red away. And he might just use the reds that are around the pink spot as a stopper here. Eleven. Depends if he can hold for the pink without doing that. Nineteen. Above the blue would have been so much easier get position on his next red. That'll do very nicely. It's imperative there that he got the white over that side of the table. Twenty-five. This is going to be a bit awkward. Twenty-eight. 
Touching Bull, please nominate. Blue Bull. He's going to put the cue ball behind the green, or at least that's what he was thinking of doing. May put it behind the yellow, but either way, he was unlucky there. It looked a, a certainty that he was going to go on to clinch the fray at, at that visit. Jimmy White, 25. Took advantage of yet another possibility. Just touch the cue ball. Leaving Henry Snooker behind the blue. Well, this could go wrong. He'd have to play this dead wet. pace for that and he would have left an easy pot. It was a clever shot though because he's 49 points behind and he's opened those reds. to the A little bit of insurance, pushing the red on the side cushion. a good shot had he have avoided the contact with the blue say he does look very relaxed here. Six. Yes, relaxed but uh, very determined. Many mistakes in the opening three frames, but he's going to be 2 1 behind. Jimmy White, 13 and the frame. Yes, Hendry was shut out of that frame. White leads by two frames to one. 
worried that Jimmy would get cut into a putting competition and, and, and you know, not be outdone by Ronnie. Didn't work out that way. He seems to now take each match in its merits, and uh, that's perhaps a part of his game that's developed for the last few years, really, isn't it? Well, I mean, e even uh, people like Alex Hurricane Higgins, as he was, in 72, but when he won it in 82, he realised that you just can't keep running around the table taking too many chances. Not at this level. Fascinating quarter-final, this. 2-1, this is the last one before the interval. Amazing, Clive. Once again, those two reds are around the black either side and have put it out of commission with the break-off shot. It, it is amazing how many times that's happened. Thank you. We'll have a lesson that language, please. A bad contact. Yeah. And also, Alan Chamberlain reprimanding a somewhat over-enthusiastic member of the audience. One. Although I have to say that despite the very vociferous support that White is getting, The order on the shot six has been pin drop quiet. Seven. Thirteen. Fourteen. Had a good example there of Jimmy queuing right into the cloth and then just delivering the cue. Just queued slightly above that. Eighteen. If he actually hit the ball as low as he initially addresses it, He'd miss cue every time. Yes, I suppose club owners dread that when the young players are in practicing and practicing the way Jimmy cues up. I think there's a few little, uh, few little holes and cloths around the country. Twenty-five. Jimmy White is playing at a nicely measured, considered pace. Twenty-six.
32. Didn't quite get into that one. Wanted the white further across the table, so we have to play for the red that's near the green this time. That's if he takes the pink. But even that is quite a thinnish cut, so he's looking at the blue. blue. Good queuing, looking very good indeed. 44. Mid-session interval coming up. After this frame. Jimmy White, 44. Doesn't miss many with the rest. One. So that's where White's sequence of 106 unanswered points came to an end. made it very awkward for himself a little bit too far with the cue ball Have to just drop it in dead weight to give himself a chance 40 continue the break Eighteen. got the ankle on the pink this time he wants to get on that red to the left of the black and he's just pointing the tip of the cue where he'd like to put the white because he could bring the black into play 18. Now has he got the pace of it as he intended 25 wants to just cannon the red he may not be able to do it from there No, couldn't quite get to the 26. red. <coughs> and 
he's thinking about it, but to take the pink and go all the way around the table would be very difficult. And this is equally as difficult to screw right back past the pink there. It's not a very prolonged round of applause there, so Stephen Hendry got plenty of supporters here also. Thirty-two. Again, though, hasn't uh, taken the cue ball quite where he wanted to. <coughs> Needed to be straightish on the pink to get on the red near the black spot. And he's got to avoid the yellow and the brown here with the white. End of break. A 38. But at least he's right back in this frame. I don't know if he can take the pot on here and avoid the cannon on the black. He was thinking about it, but it doesn't look on that. Might be able to avoid the black, but can he get the angle to pop the red? Stephen Henry, 38. I'm not sure if that was the correct choice of shot, but he's got away with it reasonably well. the ideal angle on the pink though to get on the last red Seven. excellent shot to, to screw on and off the cushion 13 in front Stevens pondering on his choice of shot. Better just playing a good safety shot when he ran out of position. straight on the blue he would have potted it without hesitation blue ball. thirteen We've got quite a way to travel with the white here we might no I can't hold it Got to go up and down. 50. And he's made a bit of a mess of it. I don't think he can see the potting angle. That was a bit of a careless one. That's the first careless shot that Jimmy's played in these opening frames. I'm not sure if he can pass the blue to get to the potting angle. He only needs the green. I 
to believe Clive, looking at the white coming off the cushion, he had to play it with a, a lot of side to just get round the blue. It was a great pot on the green. 27. So, I'm afraid it's Jimmy White, who leads by three frames to one at the mid-session interval. Heroes of heroes. 3-1 then, Jimmy White leads at the halfway stage. They're ready, so are we. Here's MC Rob Nothman again. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome back the two players, Jimmy White and Stephen Hendry. Possible seven more frames to be played this afternoon in front of this packed Wembley Conference Centre audience. 3-1 to White then, and our commentators to resume the story, Dennis Taylor and Clive Everton. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Can we please put the cameras away? Please put the cameras away. Frame five. And Jimmy White to break. of history between these two. I think it's not about them, it's about now. important for Hendry to win the first frame after the resumption. 4-1 adrift would take some getting back. a great pot and I'm just wondering if he's on this black to the corner pocket he's a very close to it so but he's got to be careful to cover that red that's near the right corner If he does come off the side of the black, he's got to play it with screw and, and side. He's now looking at the possible pot that I mentioned. And if it's a difficult safety shot, we might as well have a go at the pot, but it's got to go in. Now he's away, he knows it's not there. You mean why? One. He could tell as soon as he made contact with the cue ball. Just watch Jimmy. He's up and he's walking back to his seat. One. Five. Didn't get into that one at all. Long way short of where he wanted. He's hoping to leave an angle on the blue and get much closer to the reds. Ten.
the 11th. It's not going to be easy for Hendry to make a lot here. Black in the middle of the ball cushion, pink tied up. can't afford to do that against Jimmy White, although he hasn't left a great deal. It's the one red, but that's a straightforward pot. The Brown has come back up the table with the cue ball, so maybe Jimmy can manufacture a bit of angle to get to the Brown. Just screw back behind it. Well, that's where Stephen Hendry was trying to get the cue ball. Jimmy can now pot the blue and bring the pink into play. He's got other options, but that would open pink and reds up. If he plays that shot, he'd be unlucky not to finish on a red. Used the chance to open them. Eleven. So he's got to keep getting back for the blue. Twelve. Not above the blue that time. I never thought I'd say this, but I thought that his uh, shot choice off his last blue was pretty conservative. A 17. problem that faces Jimmy now, he's got to get the white over to the right side of the table to leave himself a choice of balls. Anywhere along the line would give him a chance. It's a bit close to the cushion, but there was a choice of reds. 22. close to the cushion. I don't think he can do much positionally. Well, if this works, he'll free the pink. Well played. 23. <laughs>
29. get on choice of reds to right corner. Thirty six. when he seemed to be building up a frame winning break he misses unexpectedly Stephen Hendry's going to have to get his act together here because he can't miss many more Six. chances like the one he did when missing that easy brown. Stephen Henry, six. One of the finest cures we've ever seen in the game. And, well, he didn't get anywhere near the pocket with that. Hit it much too straight, potting to his right. And, in fact, uh, he missed the brown in the same way. Hit it too straight. right on the pocket but it, I don't think it's cuttable from where Stephen Hendry is and this other one's a very thin snick as well so is he going to come off the bottom cushion he is you know he's going to judge this correctly Could quite easily slip past it This would normally be straightforward for Stephen Hendry, but after that last miss, well, Six. you just don't know. Seven. That's a terrific shot, as he's got the angle to get to the two reds. Thirteen. Could be quite a turning point in this match. This frame after the mid-session interval. Nineteen. Twenty-one. 
20. Yes, if Hendry could win this frame after making a couple of glaring blunders. Twenty-five. It would be a huge bonus. <clears throat> yes, green, brown, and blue required. Stephen just having a quick glance at the scoreboard on the way around. Thirty. Thirty-four. <laughs> Thirty-nine. Two blunders from Andrew in that frame, but from his third chance, a 45 clearance to pink to reduce his arrears to 3-2. Well, as we always say, first frame after the interval when it's 3-1 is so important. 3-2 now, and Stephen Hendry, not exactly a broad smile, but he'll be well pleased with that. Jimmy missed the red on 37, then Stephen missed the red into the bottom pocket, and Jimmy missed to the middle. And the shot that Stephen played off the cushion, John Virgo, um, spectacular, you reckon not that difficult, and in the end, quite lucky. Yeah, well, as you can see, Stephen, uh, he's not happy, but because he knows he, he didn't win that frame, Jimmy lost it, and uh, he, he's trying to psych himself up because he is missing a lot of pots, and, uh, but that was a big frame, I agree with Dennis Taylor, that could be a turning point in this match, because Jimmy had two very good chances to win it. And uh, Jimmy will be disappointed to have lost that frame. But as I say, Stephen, you can see him there. He's still upset and he still isn't happy with his form. But as I say, he's, he's now back to 3-2. Big frame coming up. Four frames out of the five we've seen really so could have gone either possible, way. Please. Under that 199 break by Stephen Hendry. I've seen a frame that won convincingly. Frame six. Stephen Hendry to break. Didn't get away with it this time. It was a shot to nothing, but the red came down with the white. One. But another frame where the blacks got tied up off the break off shot. It's amazing that. Incredible to watch Stephen his pots like this. He's missing some balls. I think when great players get just to pass their peak, they just make more unforced errors. Their best is still very, very good, but they don't produce it as consistently. Interesting choice of shot from Jimmy. He was going to take the red on to the middle and then changed his mind, but he could have played a better safety. I suppose he locked this in after missing a couple of easy ones.
couldn't envisage, of course, that uh, the ready play would come back and disturb the bunch. One. Six. It's dropped in no man's land, has it? I don't think the red goes to the middle. Carefully to hide this with the green or get the white tight on the cushion. Jimmy White. That's a clever shot. Six. He's got the white tight on the cushion, but he's covered that other one. Amazing, isn't it? After all the easy shots he's missed. But length of the table. From tight on the ball cushion, in it goes. A seven. And a test for any player after he's made mistakes is how he reacts to it. Eight. Quite sure what angle he has here. I don't know whether he can get up to the black from the yellow. He was almost straight on it. Well, you can bring it into play here. Eleven. I think inside he's probably getting a little bit annoyed with himself, Clive, with those couple of easy pots that he's missed. And Eighteen. Well, it might just spur this fellow on. Yes, I think he's got the motivation anyway, but maybe there's just something that needs to turn the switch inside him. Nineteen. Well, that's unlucky. 26. <coughs> Stephen Henry, 
26. take this right on to the middle because he would be on the black the only red he would leave would be the one next to the blue so it might just be worth the risk of dropping it in <laughs> this would be a bit of a test for Jimmy if he takes that red on to the right of blue He made sure that he screwed back far enough so that he didn't leave the one near the left middle. He missed the one he was attempting, but hit all across it. <laughs> the added pressure of that shot was that he was always going to leave the one over the opposite middle pocket. the white just a little bit to the right of that and he could have stunned the pink in and finished on these two reds and still screw back and leave himself one He's left it very awkward for himself. He's going to need the spider. He's got to get out into the middle of the table to leave the red on. And he was trying to get himself an angle somewhere near the circle there, but it was always going to be difficult. I suppose the one thing about missing the blue is it hasn't got nicely on the red. But that was difficult. Not so much the pot, but the cue ball there wasn't easy. One. Eight. 
9. Sixteen. Seventeen. <laughs> Developing both reds. Twenty-three. As long as he disposes of both these reds, Henry won't need the awkward one near the left-hand side cushion. Twenty-four. Just the red. It hasn't made it as easy as it might have been. <laughs> Safely in no one. It's going to be very interesting the next couple of frames, but uh, Stephen Hendry hasn't played at his best, but he's going to level the match. He's missed some easy pots, but Jimmy's let a few chances slip away. 37. And Jimmy knows that he can't afford to make mistakes. And Stephen Hendry. Forty-two. Forty-nine. <laughs> he had to wait because the white ball was still 54. spinning there, the way he played the brown. Before break, Stephen Henry levels up three all. Three frames each. Jimmy White to break. Jimmy got the wild card because of his early season performances. Final of the British Open, semi final of the Grand Prix, put him to provisional nine in the world, and he got it over Steve Davis. Yes, White uh, played very well in early season, but uh, has not been reproducing that until his two matches here both of which he played pretty well <laughs> fascinating battle this even if so far the standard isn't all that marvelous
There's no easy safety shot on here. That's the reason Stephen tried to just pot the red. Is Jimmy going to be tempted? Take this red along the top cushion, get nicely onto the black. <laughs> Just a little shot like that can restore your confidence fairly quickly. Well played. But that wasn't. Hey. Looks like there's still a red on to the right corner, but he's going into the other reds and he won't be too sure what's going to happen. The white here. Choice of shots. I think Jimmy was disappointed with his previous positional shot and he forced the issue there. Seven. You might have uh, heard Henry gasp there. Got a slight kick as he potted this red. Through the cue ball. Fuller onto the second ball than he intended, but it's still all right. That's close to the middle pocket. Forty. is tied up, I think. He hasn't quite got the angle to pot the blue and just nudge into the pink as he did a few shots ago just to bring it into play. He's looking to see if the red would go behind it. That would open things up also. Twenty-five. Well, he's judged that to perfection. Twenty-six. Thirty. 
32. Thirty nine. Forty. Forty six. Forty seven. Another bad contact there. And just over 2,000 people in the Wembley Conference Centre this afternoon, and you could hear a pin drop at the moment. Complicated now. It's been a very good effort, though, from the Scot. Fifty-four. <coughs> going into the second ball, he wasn't sure exactly where the cue ball was going to finish. He's back again. A 59. Looks much more confident now. A 60. This is exactly what he did in his previous match 66. against young Sean Murphy. 4-1 down, was struggling, and then suddenly breaks from every direction. 67. This frame safely in the bag. 73. His third in succession. 74. <laughs> 81. That's pretty good effort. That's going to drop in behind the red. 89. Back double. Hit the red thin, knock it in the opposite middle pocket. Ninety-three. Screw in the right hand side. Check the ball off the two cushions. Too much. Ninety-five. You 
won't see a better positional shot than pot of that yellow. That was amazing. Terrific amount of side on it. And the crowd really responding to this performance here. This is the 519th century of Hendry's career. Almost twice as many as anyone else. And with that break, 113. Stephen Hendry leads Jimmy White by four frames to three. Semi-final. Both return to the arena. It's frame eight, and Hendry in the lead for the first time. up again off the break. Stephen might be able to play the safety shot and just develop it. <laughs> Hendry looking for his first major title for 17 months. A long time for him. Not sure if that's on twice across the table to get to that red, but it's very difficult uh, to get away with it anywhere else on the table. You might just have to try and get to that red. Foul Not and a miss. Quite. And Stephen Hendry four. But at least now he knows that he's got a chance to get to it. I want to play it with too much pace, otherwise you could leave one of the other reds. Even nestling in the, the back of the right of the two reds is close to this one on the cushion. And I can't see any other shot that would uh, get it safe for him, so he might have to try it again. That's uh, closer, I think. He's just skidding off the cushion. But if he touches that, he's fine. Is it a touching ball? Just reached. Just touch the cue ball.
not awkward queuing for all reds though. being off its spot there's nothing to play behind over the right side of the table some very good safety being played here from both players Hit that all wrong. White has totaled only 26 points in the last two frames. So he needs to get going again here. on the black than he wanted. I'm not sure if he can play a cannon onto the red just to hold the white up here. It'll have to be a very delicate little shot. Yeah, well judged. <laughs> very good at that type of shot. Just picking the loose reds off. The six not very well placed behind the black spot. But as he clears the reds, it will clear a path to eventually get to disturb some of those. The two either side of the uh, bunch of six are okay. We'd have preferred to have played for the two loose ones there. Twenty seven. Twenty eight.
And that's a bit careless. If he's straight on this red, it's going to be difficult 43. to get to the black. Just a little lapse in concentration. He's got a slight angle, but not a lot. That's all he could do. 44. Looks to be a natural angle to cannon the red if he pots the black. But this could go wrong. highest break of the match <laughs> Jimmy White oh. 51 he forgot about the red it was such an easy pot he forgot all about the red thank you he was just concerned about the cue ball One. Talk about an unforced error. <coughs> Hendry had to cannon the blue from uh, his initial red. But doesn't have an angle to open those reds. And he's got to play for the black or even blue to give himself a chance to get into the reds, but this is not straightforward. Stephen Henry, seven. Sounded like a kick to me. Jimmy can get this white between the brown and yellow, he could get a snooker almost. <laughs> well, the cannons prevented that. But it gives Stephen an opportunity to get back behind brown and yellow. Jimmy's be quite pleased with that. The reds were nicely open. He's knocked a few of them safe again. Shaving past the outside edge of his intended red.
One. Looking a bit glum now. Perhaps disappointed with the way he's playing. He's usually so good into the middle pockets. Hendry was, in fact, only playing for the six extra points. He couldn't get position on the road. No harm done, though. careful here when nestling into the reds off the side cushion doesn't want too much pace on it and that's not a good one that's a poor shot we want it to be the right side of the reds but it might not be easy for Stephen Henry to get position your pinky missed in the opposite middle pocket. I don't think he likes the look of that blue. Not a bad idea to bring the black into play. He's 31 behind. Green ball. And he's playing the green, but a bit delicate to get the snooker here. Double kiss might be on. Stephen Hendry, one. with the pink down on the ball climb as well. I was surprised that uh, Henry didn't bring the black into play there. He's got a shot to nothing. In the middle of the three reds there. Near the blue. He can take that and avoid the cannon onto the red. He'd head well, he's going for the one that's near the pocket. This is more difficult, I think. I think he'd have been better playing the other red there and taking the white back down the table. See the black is available provided he can get in between brown and black with the cue ball. One. Well, that's what he was attempting, to leave the black, but he'd have to wait. He really needs the black back up onto its spot with the two reds up at the top end of the table.
4. Bad blow for Jimmy Eleven. White, although Stephen Henry's got an awful lot to do. Jimmy would be thinking about that. Well, it was such an easy red with the rest. He lost his concentration momentarily. Got to go all the way around the table to get to the reds again. And I don't think that's hard enough. Nineteen. It was a good effort. I was expecting to finish on the brown. Took the red as a sort of shot to nothing, but he can put Jimmy in quite a bit of trouble here in behind the pink, and it would be very difficult to hit. Come on, Jimmy! Stephen Henry, 20. This is very risky. If he takes the pot on, the red will come back down the table if it doesn't go in. And if he doesn't fancy the pot, he'd have to play it much thinner to leave it safe on this cushion. Not quite sure. Attempt the pot there or not? Andrew misses the difficult pot. This is an easier one for White. Well, he's just suffering from the pressure out there. Jimmy really knows how important this frame is. 5-3, he would have to win the three remaining frames. Wow. 
it's Team amazing how oh. things like that can happen to you, but he did miss the red he normally would knock in. And sometimes you don't get that second chance. Needn't abandon hope yet, though, because uh, Henry would need the blue to win this frame. One. Yes, which wouldn't be too bad if the brown was on its spot, but it's not. Now, if he does get yellow and green, it's imperative he gets a good angle on the brown to give himself a chance to get up to the blue. He's got a bit of angle, but still needs a very good shot to drop on the blue. Thirty. And having taken a low-value colour, he also needs the pink. This is far from easy. Yeah. 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 Stephen Hendry was 3 1 down. Yeah. After a run of four straight frames, puts him 5 3 up. Two up, three to play. Massively significant. And Stephen Henry very cool under what must have been enormous pressure towards the end of that frame. But uh, one has to say, John Virgo, that what seems a long time ago now, Jimmy missed a red right into the middle on 51. Should have been all over then, shouldn't it? Well, I don't say he'd been all over, but he should have certainly got another 20 points, maybe. Uh, but then he had a chance at the end of the frame on the uh, last red. And you can't believe he, he's missed it. But of course, it's, it's all come about because early on in this match, he's not taken his chances. And uh, the pressure's built and built and built. And uh, Jimmy will be very disappointed because, as I say, against Ronnie O'Sullivan, he played as well as I've seen him for many a year. And uh, I'm certain he thought he was going to come out today like I did and produce that type of form, which would have made a real good match of this. But as I say, he's not taken his chances. He's not scored when he's got in. Stephen now, his confidence is high. It'd be a brave man to think that Jimmy White could come back from here. But you never know, something might just spark a little bit and he could get that form, but it's an uphill task now. Everest standards. Four frames in a row for Stephen Henry, who, remember, trailed 3-1 at the mid-session interval. Here's frame nine. safety from Hendry.
7. We need something a little bit special here. Uh, how's his luck? That's not bad. Make no mistake, this fellow won't lie down. Battle away right to the end. Is he okay? He's freed the black. A little bit more pace would have been better. I'm not sure if he can see the red. Oh, it's very tight, that. He's having a look to see if the black's available in the opposite corner. He might have to play this with a touch of side just to get it around the black to make the potting angle. And there you see, now that you've got a perfect picture. Well played. Twenty-eight. It's not over yet. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. <laughs> Too bit intended to bite the tip off the QE. He didn't want that little cannon on the red there. It's made it awkward queuing now. Jimmy White, thirty-seven. So once again, Jimmy White didn't make as many as he should have done once he was in. Not a good shot. Far too hard Eight. with the white. He has done extremely well here, Stephen Henry. The majority of the crowd on Jimmy White's side. He's got a lot of supporters here himself, but he's playing very well. And also, there's been nothing to criticise in uh, the behaviour of white supporters. They've been uh, vociferous in their encouragement, but once uh, either White or Hendry has been down on the shot, 
They've given them the best of order. Stephen Henry, nine. Again, hit the ball too full. Potting to his right. Seems to have a bit of a problem that way from time to time. He's a bit too close to that red. He's very, very close, so it would need quite a thin contact. He's got to be careful he doesn't push this. It's a bit short of pace and you have to head up towards the pink and blue when going into the reds. Well, he didn't push the cue Thank through you. at all there. Tried to push it on through, possibly get on the black. Might have been better screwing back. Jimmy White has been in twice in this frame and still not clinched it. 